So have you ever wondered about what are all the steps needed to set up a computer vision pipeline and also computer vision projects? So in this video here, we're going to cover every single step in the whole computer vision pipeline, how we can go from having an idea, generating data, data collection, labeling our images as well. After we have done that, how can we set up a model, choose between if we want to fine tune a model or train a custom model all the way from scratch with random initialized weights, depending on your applications, projects, and so on that you want to solve how we can go in, tune the high parameters, test out different variations of the model. So we have all these versions of YOLO. We also have different instances. So it could be the small nano meteor and so on. So those are the model developments that we need to do over and over again, iterate, evaluate our models. Once we have a correct model, once we have a good enough model for our project, we can then go into the model deployment phase. Do we need it on an edge device in cloud? How do we deploy the model? What type of system and so on? How do we want to build a system around it? And then at the end, how can we monitor our model? How does it perform in production? Do we need to retrain our model over time? Does our data drift? How can we collect more data, retrain the model and set up this whole computer vision pipeline? So let's just get into it. Let's talk about it and go through each individual step. So if we go inside the guides tab, we basically have guides for pretty much everything that you can use the YOLO models, object detection and so on for in a computer vision pipeline, could be setting up different environments, how we can run different model deployment options, YOLO optimization frameworks, and also now when we're talking about every single step in the computer vision pipeline. So if you scroll a bit further down, we can then go in to the steps of a computer vision project, but you also have like defining computer vision project, data collection and annotation, pre-processing annotated data, tips for model training. So these are each individual step that we talked about in the introduction. So let's now go inside the step of a computer vision project and take a look at some of these visualizations and also graphs, because then you will get a pretty good understanding of what is required. How can we set up a whole pipeline for object detection, segmentation, and basically just an arbitrary computer vision project. So at the top here, we have an introduction. So we have different types of detectors in computer vision. You can do image classification where you take a whole image, throw it into the model, and then we just get labels back for the whole image. But we can also go in and do localization in our image when we do object detection. So we will then draw a bounding box around each individual object that we're detecting. So we both get the localization of the optic, but also a class assigned to that bounding box. Then we also have image segmentation where we basically just segment out every single pixel for this specific object that we want to detect or segment out in our image frame. So these are different types that we can set up for a computer vision pipeline. So once you have a project, you have a specific solution that you want to solve or a use case, then you need to figure out which of these ones here that you need to use. After you're done that, what model, test out the model, do some iterations, model development, generate your data, annotate it, and then set up the whole pipeline. But first of all, we need to determine which of the ones we want to use, but you can also do a combination of it. So you can always just concatenate or have a whole pipeline with several models as well. Could be some use cases where that would be helpful. Here you can see an overview of the computer vision project. But first of all, the first one is to lay out the ground mark, figure out how can you solve the problem, what type of model and so on do you need, Basically just set up the groundwork, make the plan for your development phase. Then we need to collect data, could be from cameras, could be images, video streams and so on that we need to chunk up, capture, and then we need to prepare it, annotate our images, do some pre-processing steps, could also be data augmentation. Each individual steps here, we have videos covering like the whole setup, pipeline, how you can do it on your own with the Ultralytics framework. And the good thing here is that you can set everything up in just a few lines of code all the way from feature engineering, model development, how you can test out different models. We even have the Ultralytics hub, how we can do model deployments, export it into different optimization frameworks, export it for model deployments, how you can use the inference hub as well. Model monitoring, all of these steps here are covered so we can combine all of it. But in this video, we're just walking through how we basically just create this computer vision pipeline. So this is really important when we want to go from an idea to a product, actually running out in the real world and making AI and computer vision useful. First of all here, we need to define our project goal. So that is in laying the groundwork. So we need to set up an objective, could be detecting specific optics in our frame. Let's say that we want to do traffic analysis. Then we need to be able to detect cars, truck, 
bosses and so on, depending on your use case. So we need to define our project goals. What is the final outcome of it? How do we see, want to set up the whole pipeline? What type of object detection model do we want to use? Does it require real time? Do we only want to process a couple of images here and there? So we need to define our project goals to start with because it is going to make the whole process and the rest of the pipeline significantly easier. Then we have another step here, selecting the right model and training approach. Do we want to train from scratch or use transfer learning? So the difference here is that when we're training from scratch, we just take our whole neural network update detection model. Then we have random initialized weights. So all of the values, they will just be random and we need to train from scratch. We then take our images, throw it through the model. We then get the results based on our annotations and our ground truth. And by using that, we know the output of our model. We know the ground truth. We can then take the difference and then do a bunch of math to update all of the random initialized weights over time. If we just keep on iterating over that process, at the end of the day, our model would act like learn, but we need a lot of data if we want to train our model from scratch and achieve good results at the end. So if you just have a few hundred images, training from scratch would probably require a few thousand images if you really need a good model to be able to use that in production. So we can also use transfer learning. It is basically just trained on a huge data set, could be ImageNet, the Coco data set and so on. And then we fine tune it on our specific data set. So then our model is not initialized with random weights, but the weights trained on a specific data set. It has already learned the early features in the data set. So basically like lines, different types of shapes, could be cars, pedestrians, persons, and so on. Then we take a few hundred images in our own data set and then fine tune it based on that. So we modify the weights just slightly based on our own specific data set. So these are two variations that we can use for training approaches. And then you need to go in and choose which of the models do we want to run, the nano model, small, medium, large, and so on, depending on how fast you want to run it and also the accuracy that you need for your specific use case. Once we know all of that, we know our model, the approach that we want to take and also our requirements, then we can go in, collect data, because now we know if we want to do image classification, update detection, segmentation, we have our data, we collect it from our camera, image files, videos, and so on. And then we need to go in and annotate it, draw bounding boxes around it, segmentation mask, and so on, or put it into the correct folder structure for classification. So once we have that, we know our model, we have our data set, and we can then move into act like training a model, doing data augmentation, and getting into the model development phase. So another step here is data augmentation. So if you only have a few hundred images or even like tens of images, you can go in and use data augmentation on top of it. So let's say that you have an image, you can actually like just use one image, you can rotate it a bit, you can zoom in, you can do some shearing effect, you can change the colors, the brightness and all of that. And by just doing that modification, you actually like get a different image that you can use in your data set and your model will be able to generalize way more because we have more data, we have different cases, when you're building your computer vision projects and pipeline, we want to have as much variation in our data set as possible. We want our model to generalize as much as possible, figure out different edge cases and so on. And the only way our model can learn that is basically just feeding it data. So data augmentation is a pretty huge step in the computer vision pipeline and also splitting our data set. So once we have our data set, we need to split it into our train test and validation split. So the training set usually have around 80% of our images in there. And we're training on that specific data set. Then we have our validation data set, which we're doing iterations on. We do our evaluation on our validation set after we have trained our model. Then we do our iterations back and forth, change the model out. We do some high parameter tuning and so on. Once we have done that, we're satisfied with our model. We can then take our test set and test our final model on that before we do our deployments. Then you can also like benchmark it, compare the different models that you're developing later on or retraining it depending on your test set. So those are basically just standalone data splits that we want to use because we don't want to validate our model on data that we have trained on because at the end of the day, we want our models to generalize. We want it to be able to do predictions on data that it has never seen before. So this is a pretty good step in the computer vision pipeline as well. Now we're get down to the model training part. So it's basically just using Autolytics, swap out the model, train a model. So this is a really easy step and Autolytics makes this significantly easier compared to any other framework out there. Single line, you just need to modify it. You can change the image size, the batch size, all the high parameters, even the model, and you're good to go. You can just start the training and we have videos covering 
all of that here in the channel. So definitely check those out both for training, training ULV8, ULV9, ULV10 and so on in just a few lines. Now we have that, we can then do model evaluation and also model fine tuning, depending on the high parameters, the performance metrics. So we need to have this iterative loop where we just keep on developing a model until we're satisfied with the results. Once we are satisfied with results, we can do model testing and also model deployment. So we can deploy it to an endpoint, an API. We can just send a request to it with an image, get the response back with the results, could be the bounding boxes and so on. Could also be that we want to run it on an edge device as Jetson Nano, Raspberry Pi and so on. Then we need to convert it into a format where it can be optimized for the specific hardware that is running on. And that's always good practice to do. So definitely check those out. We have all the guides over here to the left as well. Once we have that, we have our whole computer vision pipeline up and running. We have done each individual step. A model is now running out in the real world. And the last step that we need to do is monitoring, maintenance, and also documentation. So once we have this whole loop, you can see it down here at the bottom, we can have this iterative loop. So we have training. First of all, we need to do labeling. Then we train or retrain a model. We evaluate it. Then we deploy it. We monitor our model to see how it does it perform. So sometimes when you're deploying your model in a real world scenario, could be that the camera is changing slightly over time, could be that the data is changing slightly over time, and that you have to actually just feed back some image example into our data set, retrain the model, and then redeploy the model as well. Could be both model drift, data drift, and so on. So we need a tool to be able to monitor that, lock the accuracy, so we can basically just have the best system up and running as much as possible. So this is pretty cool. This is very important that you do this. A lot of people is missing out on the last part here because they just think that they have your model, they deploy it, it will work forever and they don't have to do anything. They have already evaluated the model inside the notebook. But again, could be that you deployed, it is not performing as you want it to, could have data drift and so on. So it is a very important step. So these are all the steps that we need to set up for our computer vision pipeline. Each individual step, we covered that in the video on a higher level, went through these visualizations and also graphs. If you want to dive more into it, each individual step, we have tons of videos covering all of it and also inside the documentation. It's just a few lines that you have to read through. Watch the videos here on the YouTube channel and also inside the documentation. With the Ultralite framework, you just need to set up a few lines of code and you have everything up and running, model training, and friends, even how we can run optic tracking with all these types of models modes and so on. So thank you lots for watching this video here. I hope you have learned a ton. Definitely get familiar with the whole computer vision pipeline and each individual step. It's going to save you a ton of time, but also make you able to set up whole computer vision systems in the correct way. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.